பண்ணலாம So hello all, uh, welcome to our Idea Plexus YouTube channel. I'm Dr. SJK, I'm the ENT faculty for you. So this uh, neat PG, I hope most of you would have done in a great, great way. Uh, the problem is it was quite easy for some, okay? If, uh, if it is easy for many people out there, uh, the problem is the cutoff may drastically reduce. That is one small problem. But uh, leave alone that, uh, let's uh, recall all the questions that were asked uh, in this NEET exam concerning ENT. Um, so ENT, apart from our um, discussion, so in area plexus, we gave colored workbook-based teaching. In colored workbook-based teaching, all the eight questions which were asked from ENT part, all were from our workbook. Okay, we have a colorful workbook around 250 pages so all the questions were on a workbook so it's 100 percent straight Now we'll start with the ENT recall uh, concerning with uh, this uh, NEET uh, PG 2025. Small. So total eight questions that are asked on the workbook and also we have a good thoroughly revised question bank in which ENT have around 600 questions. All these eight questions were from that question bank. Okay, so let's start with that discussion. So, what is the trend of this particular exam? Usually, there used to be a trend where at least 50% of questions from ENT will be asked from here, that is otology. Now, last three years, the trend was changed in both INSET as well as NEET PG. Now, again, they got back to that same trend. More questions were asked from conventional topics such as otology to be precise. Neurootology such as audiogram, tuning fork test, all questions were asked. CSIM question was asked after a uh, lo long, long period. So if you have covered some of the important topics from ENT, I'm sure you would have answered all the eight questions correctly. So question number one, 30 year may presence to the clinic with a history of a recurrent ear infection and recent popping sensation in the left ear. Otoscope examination shows Central perforation of the tympanic membrane, audiometry shows right ear, air and bone conduction with the normal limits, left ear significant air bone gap. So around this will be the picture that was portrayed in the exam. So see here, we are having air bone gap more than 10 decibel. So what is the thumb rule to find out an audiogram? So this is a page from our workbook. To find out any audiogram, we should always follow this thumb rule. Any curve more than 25 decibel. Hearing loss is present. Bone conduction curve more than 25 decibel. Sensory neural hearing loss. Air bone gap more than 10 decibel. Conductive air bone gap less than 10 decibel sensory neural. Okay, 
So if you follow this thumb rule, you will never miss any type of audiogram. If you follow this thumb rule, you will never miss any type of audiogram. So we'll get back to the question. See here in this question. So if it is right sided, it will be red color. Okay, right sided means it will be red color. Left sided means blue color. Then broken lines means the lines are broken means it will be continuous lines means air conduction. So now with that, so it's a clear cut picture of left sided conductive hearing loss. The answer is A, left sided conductive hearing loss. Fine. So that brings us to the end of the first question asked from ear part in AMD. The second question, a patient presents to the clinic with a history of chronic ear discharge, hearing loss for several months, otoscopic examination reveals central perforation of tympanic membrane pta confirms conductive hearing loss so this question has a bit of controversy so a proper dry cp for at least three months was not given in the question and also option doesn't have the option doesn't have cortical mastoidectomy as the option So the perfect answer is no history of dry CP for at least three months. That is not there. For that reason, for that reason, if cortical mastectomy is not given in the question, you could go for meringoplasty. So if at all, if you have a pars tensa perforation, you will always go for meringoplasty or cortical mastectomy. So this modified radical mastectomy is only for unsafe or articoandral or squamous type of CSOM. Okay. Unsafe or articoandral or squamous type of CSOM. So, exploratory tympanotomy can be done in two kinds of cases. One is diagnosis not confirmed, okay, or in stepidotomy with unconfirmed place of otosclerosis. What do you mean by that? A patient is having conductive hearing loss. We have diagnosed it as otosclerosis. But we are not sure where the Fixation is there. There are some rare cases where malleus go for fixation. So if we are not sure, we can't tell that procedure as stepidotomy because if stepidotomy itself not in, in, involved means we can't call it as a stepidotomy. So it is called exploratory tympanotomy to find out which part of the ossicular network is fixer or having otosclerotic patch or having otosclerotic patch. So again, we have screenshot from our workbook. See here, chronic cortical dysplasia into mucosal type, squamous type. The same picture was given in our workbook. So here, this is a case of safe type or mucosal type or tubotympanic type of CSOM. Now, next question. Again, we are 
reserving a question from humans on here after a while okay we used to have questions repeatedly asked from mr bashwanamma glomus tumor last three years it was not the case but again we could see a question from vestibular schwannoma so 45 female two years history of progressive unilateral hearing loss mri shows well defined tumor over the cerebellofontaine angle okay so surgical resection is performed after doing surgical resection the histopathological examination shows antenna ear pattern which is a crowded arrangement of cells antenna ear pattern is Sparsely arranged. Yes, sparsely arranged. So the answer for this is a clear-cut case of vestibular schwannoma. So ependymoma. So it will ha not have this particular antenna and antenna be pattern. So no brain. Huh? So this particular histopathological pattern seen only in vestibular schwannoma. It's quite an easy question. So okay. This is a page from a workbook. This workbook shows antenna A pattern and antenna B pattern. Of course. Next question. Moving on to the rhinology part. Again, we got the question from trauma. So usually used to get that question from nasal bone fracture, zygoma fracture, CSF. We again got a question from this particular thing. See significant nasal trauma. Examination reveals deviated nasal pyramid. Palpation confirms crepitus and mobility of nasal bones. So it's a clear cut picture showing a fracture over nasal bone. Now, this will confirm displaced nasal bone fracture. The picture was also given. Now, the question was very clear. What instrument can be used? They didn't give the picture of the instrument and also they didn't give ash forceps in the question so we always confuse between ash forceps used to for septal fracture reduction and also valsham's forceps for nasal bone fracture reduction okay nasal bone fracture reduction so it's a clear fit answer showing valsham forceps getting back to a screenshot from our workbook sorry see here it is valsham forceps this one is ash forceps so this is how a nasal bone fracture close reduction is done and after that, we will apply a splint to preserve the reduced segment. The next question was quite an easy question. Adolescent male, recurrent epistaxis, nasal obstruction for past one year, nasal mass is seen and bowing of posterior wall of maxillary sinus. It's a clear-cut picture of Holman Miller sign. Holman Miller sign seen in case of nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. Okay, Holman Miller sign seen in nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. So, juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma again, a picture from our workbook. It is a tumor affecting adolescent age group, profuse epistaxis, epistaxis will be bucket bucket of epistaxis, nasal obstruction, frog face deformity, commonest site is. Palatine for a man, it is thought to be due to testosterone hormone dependent tumor. Okay, so we'll be having Radkowski staging. So these are taken from our workbook. This is a Holman Miller sign. This was a Holman Miller sign. Next question is a middle aged man complains of epistaxis from nose, underwent anterior nasal packing and cauterization for arrest in the brain. Which of the following arteries involved in epistaxis can be surgically ligated? So, see here, this is a 
epistaxis due to some reason it could be hypertension nasal picking trauma or spontaneous epistaxis whatever be the cause if you have an epistaxis the artery of epistaxis is phenopalatine artery okay so if at all if you want to ligate some artery you should ligate the phenopalatine artery but if you have a face surgery done in face surgery you may ligate or artery is an anterior artery but in nowhere in the question you could see face functional endoscopic sinus surgery in the question so it can't be anterior ethmoidal artery it is only sphenopalatine artery so this is again a picture from a workbook which shows arterial supply of the nasal cavity we are having anterior and posterior ethmoidal artery from internal carotid artery sphenopalatine artery greater palatine artery superior labial artery all from external carotid artery all these will form a plexus called kiesel plexus right so now a question for anterior view of the x-ray neck was kept they showed a particular place over here and ask this to identify what is that particular place shown okay so the answer for this question is actually pyriform fossa which is a part of hypothyroid some are saying is hypothyroid region some are saying it as pyriform fossa okay so pyriform fossa so pyriform fossa many would have got it wrong because epiglottis will be a little bit higher valicla will be a little bit higher okay valicular epiglottis is a little bit higher okay so pyriform fossa is the correct answer for this question okay it is a pyriform fossa given in ap view of x-ray neck ap view of x-ray neck so this again from a workbook where we elaborately discussed ct neck x-ray neck all the findings all the structures seen over here can you see this is axial cuts ap cuts lateral cuts everything was discussed in our workbook so final question 72 smoker long history of horses of voice difficulty swallowing laryngoscopy was done biopsy converse large advanced squamous cell carcinoma involving both vocal cords okay now the surgery was done and they have given a post operative picture of the patient not the imaging or the histopathology they have given a picture of the patient so this was the image actually the same image they asked in an inset exam okay here what is there there is you could see a deficit over here so which means the patient has underwent a radical surgery removing a bigger part from the neck it is none other than that a total laryngectomy so it is a case of total laryngectomy it's a case of total laryngectomy right but this is the same question given a question back from me 2023 okay so total laryngectomy you will see a absolute deficit over the neck and the opening will be left open like this so what about tracheostomy tracheostomy opening will be completely filled and it will be more oval so this one a depression kind of thing so they again and again they are asking question from this topic how to differentiate between a total tracheostomy and a tracheostomy clinical picture so it's a case of total laryngectomy okay so that's all from ENT. So in ENT, eight questions were asked in this NEET PG. So all eight questions were from our workbook. So I hope this uh, recall was useful for you. Now, please continue reading if you are a aspirant for your next exam. So those were.